Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. Using selective focus can really concentrate composition and add a dramatic effect. But to get the best out of this technique, the lighting is of equal importance. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how I made this image. OK, so what I've got here is a table and I've put a piece of black cloth on that table. And this is where I'm going to build uh, my small set. So what I'm going to do is just using a few blocks of uh, wood, I'm just going to raise the main piece of wood, which I use in the image, off the table so it's easier to create a black background. So there's one there. This is the main piece of wood that I'm going to use uh, for the picture. I'm just going to place that on those pieces of wood like that. By raising this up a little it just means that it's easier to make this go completely black. Okay, so with that in place uh, next thing to do would be to place the actual subject. So the subject for this is this uh, rather small leaf and I'm just going to place this on the end of the piece of wood here. But to make it stand up on its own, I'm just going to use a small piece of blue tack. So I'll just put that there like so. And I'll just grab my leaf, just lean it up against the blue tack. Like that. There we go. OK, so with that in uh, something like uh, the right position, what I can do now is go on to the camera. Now I'm using a full-frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. Now the camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. OK. So I'll just pop the camera on this tripod. Now I've previously set uh, this tripod uh, at a particular height to give me a view across the top of this piece of wood. OK. So we'll just line up the shot. OK, so the first thing I'll do is just zoom that all the way into the 70mm end on the zoom lens, like so. And we'll have a go at focusing up the image. There we are. Something like that. OK. So with those bits now done, what I can do is turn the camera on, like so. And the software has recognised the camera. And these are the settings that I've got on the camera at the moment. So it's in full manual mode. I'm using a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera, ISO 100, and at the moment I'm using an aperture of f8. Now that will probably change, but for now um, it will do for a test just to make sure that we don't get any contamination from the house lights. So without any flash, I'll just grab an image and we'll see what we get. There we go. And as expected, uh, I've got very little image there at all, which is what I want. Which means that any light that I now add with flash will be the only light which affects the subject. OK, so to light something like this, um, what I'm going to use is a softbox uh, about here somewhere, uh, relatively close in to start with. So here I have a uh, Profoto D2 studio head with a two foot by two foot softbox on the front of it. OK, so we'll pop this in and we'll get this relatively close. Something like that. OK, so with that in position, I can turn the flash sync trigger on and I'll select that head and just turn it on. There we go. Now at an arbitrary energy level, I'll grab an image and we'll just assess the exposure. So 
So as a starting image, that's not too bad at all. It's possibly a little bright for my taste. Um, I might just take uh, half a stop off that. There we go. We'll grab that again. There, that's a bit better. That's got more of the tonal range that I think I want. But you can see in this that the, the depth of field is actually quite large. So to make this more of a selective focus type uh, image, what I'm going to do is reduce that depth of field by uh, changing the aperture. So I'm going to change from f8, and I'm going to change that all the way down to 2.8. Now that's a three stop change, um, so I'll need to change the uh, energy in this light by three stops. There we go. Now the other thing that will change, of course, is I've opened up the aperture quite a lot. So we may get some contamination from the house lights. So just to check for that, I'll temporarily just turn this, uh, this head off. So select the head, turn it off, and we'll grab an image and just see what we get. And there is a very slight image there, but I don't really think that that's going to uh, affect us too much. So we're going to be relatively safe. So I'll turn the head back on again. There we go. And we'll grab an image with the flash. So that has condensed the range of focus quite markably. This is what we had before at f8, and this is what we've got now at f2.8. So that has really compressed the, the focus to a fairly narrow band, which is, of course, uh, what we want. But the other thing that will affect the way that this sort of thing looks is the way it's lit. Now at the moment, I've just lit this with a large softbox very close in. Fairly standard stuff. So just see what happens when I move this back a little. So if I just move this a little way back, like so, what this will do is uh, start to change the quality of light which is coming from this. So instead of it being very, very soft, uh, as you can see in the image here, there's virtually no shadow. We'll start to produce a shadow, hopefully. Now moving it away like this uh, will change the exposure due to the inverse square law. So I'll need to add uh, perhaps a stop uh, to the exposure uh, just to make up for that difference in distance. Well, the exposure is almost the same, not far off, uh, but you can now see that we're starting to get a shadow forming uh, at the other side of the leaf here, which is what I want. So by moving the uh, light, I've made the shadow uh, a little deeper. So let's just carry on and move it a bit more. So again, move that back. And this should make the uh, shadow even more prominent. But obviously, again, due to the inverse square law, I'll need to add some more energy. Uh, so I'll just add uh, about another stop and a half. There we go. And now we'll try that again. There, now this is really coming along. This is the sort of thing that I want. Uh, we're getting some nice... Uh, texture in the actual piece of wood now and we're creating a shadow. So this is the image with the softbox very close in and this is the latest one that we've just got which has a lot more bite to it so it emphasizes the limit of the focus which is what I need to do. I want to concentrate the focus around this point. Okay, so looking at the image then, there's probably only just one more thing to do. 
just down this side along here, uh, the background is still a little light. So what I'm going to do is just flag off this area uh, just with some pieces of card. So here I have uh, some bits of card just attached to some pieces of wood so that they can stand up on their own. There we are. And what this will do is just generally darken down this area down here. Hopefully, I've got them in the right place. OK, so popping those in, grab another image. There, that's worked very well. So this is what we had before, and you can see that there's uh, some texture in here. It's very small, but it is there. Whereas in this one, there's almost nothing. OK, so with that small change, um, that's it for capturing the image. What I'll do now is take it into Photoshop and just do some post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the image that I captured earlier. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just make a duplicate of this. So I can edit the duplicate and leave the camera original alone. Now, there are many ways to do this, but the way that I like to do it is to just go onto the layer here, right-click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but ask for a new document. And we'll just call this leaf. There we go. So now I have a new document at the top here, so I can dispense with the camera original. It just gives you that bit of redundancy. So if you want to go back to the original at any time, you have it on file. OK, so what things do I want to do with this? Well, I think one of the things that I'd like to do is just emphasize the uh, perspective that we've got going on here. Now, there's a few ways to do that, but one way would be to use uh, Perspective Warp. So if I go to Edit, come down to Perspective Warp, like so. So using this, what I can do is draw a layout on the image, like this. I can just adjust this with these drag handles, just so that it resembles the edges of the piece of wood. You don't have to be that accurate. Something like that would do. Uh, OK, so now that is done, I can just click on the Warp button. And now what I can do is just change these pins. So if I now just take those in a little at the top, that stretches the image out and generally makes it appear like there's more perspective going on. There we are. Somewhere around there I think is about right for what I want. I might just make the front ever so slightly larger as well. Just like that. OK, with that done, I'll now click on Commit. There, that's good. So now what I'd like to do is just look at uh, how I'm going to end up cropping this. So if I just click on the Crop tool, I'm using this for video, so I'm going to use a specific ratio of 16 by 9. There we go. Um, so I think more or less where it is will do me. Uh, so I quite like that. So I'll just commit to that. And now just to get rid of these black areas on the side, I'll add another layer and literally just paint those in with black. So make sure that black is selected as the foreground colour. Grab a paintbrush and make that a bit bigger. We'll just take that down like so. And the same on the other side. And with that done, that's it really. So that's how I've used selective focus to concentrate the composition and encourage the viewer to look at the very center of the image. Together with some careful lighting, which has emphasized the difference in texture of the wood which is in focus and the wood which is out of focus, 
I think overall that has made a very interesting image. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other pictures as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.